J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with O-R. Just around the corner is June and hot summer days that call for crisp, tempting salads. And the best salads I know of call for Jell-O. Try combining fresh vegetables or fruits with Jell-O for an appetizing luncheon or supper salad. If you've never used Jell-O in salads, you've missed a great bet. For shimmering, Jell-O makes the most refreshing, zestful salad you ever serve. And here's one suggestion. Mold shredded cabbage, diced cucumbers, and celery in lemon Jell-O. Serve on crisp lettuce with real mayonnaise. Or make a fresh fruit salad with orange jello. Why, there are any number of interesting salad combinations you can work out for yourself using any one of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. And you'll enjoy them all, for Jell-O has that extra rich fruit flavor. Flavor that comes from the real ripe fruit itself. But whether you serve Jell-O as a salad or as a dessert, always be sure to get the real thing. Genuine Jell-O. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us hail the return of the man who last week was flat on his back, but is now standing here, flat on his feet, Jack Benny. Uh, hello again, this is Jack Benny, remember? The fellow who wasn't here last Sunday? And I want to tell you something, Don, it's a good thing I've got flat feet. <laughs> Because I'm still pretty shaky, and I'd probably topple right over if they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, Jack. You weren't so terribly sick. I wasn't, eh? That's all you know about it. As it happens, I was critically ill. Well, I didn't see any headlines in the papers about it. Well, that's not my fault. I phoned them all. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, I'll take out an ad. <laughs> well, Jack, you certainly look rested after a whole week in bed. Did you get much sleep? Don, how could I sleep with 12 flu germs playing bingo on my chest all night? <laughs> playing bingo, eh? <laughs> yes. I didn't mind that so much, but when they asked me to call out the numbers, I thought that was going too far. <laughs> you know... <laughs> you know, I'm still pretty weak. Well, you certainly don't look at Jack. You're the picture of health. Now, that's silly, Don. Take a look at my tongue. Nah. Mm, I don't see anything unusual. It's just a common, ordinary tongue. Oh, it is, eh? Well, then I'm glad I stuck it out at you. <laughs> You're just jealous because I look like Dracula. All right, all right. If it'll make you any happier, you look lousy. Now you're talking. <laughs> I'm glad you woke up. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Benny. It's time for your pill. Oh, yes. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Uh, Don, I want you to meet Dr. Baldy. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm still under his care. How do you do, Doctor? You could stand dieting, young man. Oh. <laughs> you see, Don, his mind is always on his work. Uh, my nurse is here, too. She's waiting out in the hall. Why don't you have her come in? Oh, no, not with these orchestra boys around. <laughs> They're wolves in rented clothing. <laughs> hello, Jack. I'm glad to see you back again. Oh, hello, Mary. Thanks. Gee, I sure had a tough time this past week. <laughs> see, don't I look awful? I'll say you're as pale as a goat. Goat? <laughs> you mean pale as a goat? Well, this goat is dead. Oh, oh, a goat ghost. Well, that was fast thinking. What? I say that was fast thinking. Oh, I thought you were talking about the goat. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and Mary, I want to thank you for those lovely roses you sent me. They were beautiful. Uh, were they? Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen a third of a dozen. <laughs> But, Mary, I did notice that the roses were quite limp and droopy there. What happened? I knew you were sick, so I boiled them. Well, it's a good idea. You can't be too careful, you know. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Gee, you look so laurel and hearty. That's hale and hearty, but let it go. Oh, that's all right. 
The next time I'm sick, don't wire congratulations. <laughs> well, it worked on Mother's Day. Well, let's not get involved in that, you know. Mr. Benny, it's time for your medicine again. Oh, yes, doctor, yes. Now, first you take this red pill, and then you follow it with this white one. Mm, two of them this time. I say, what's the white pill for? In case the red one is poison. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's thoughtful. Isn't he an unusual doctor, Mary? Yeah, what do you take in case of him? <laughs> I wish I knew. Say, Jack, is that girl out in the hall your nurse? Now, who do you mean? That pretty blonde with a white uniform and Phil Harris around her neck. <laughs> oh, where'd you see her? Oh, out in the hall around Phil Harris's neck. I thought you said Phil was around her neck. Oh, they're all mixed up. <laughs> no, so that's why Phil sneaked out of here. I got a good mind to go out there and put him in his place. Oh, Jack, you're up on your feet now. Why don't you stay that way? <laughs> Yes, maybe I better wait till I'm myself again, you know. Oh, it's you. Hiya, Jack, old boy. Glad to see you back again. Thanks. What are you doing out in the hall there, Phil? Well, I wasn't feeling so good, so I had your nurse take my temperature. You did, eh? Well, wipe it off your lips. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that you got in your hand? She wrote me out a prescription. Oh, yeah? What is it? Hillside 5027. <laughs> Get me a bottle of that, too. <laughs> anyway, it's time for you to play a number, so get ready. Okay. And another thing, this nurse is here to take care of me, so please stay away from her. I got a temperature, too. Quiet, Kenny. Play, Phil. Oh, nursey, nursey, oh, toot. <laughs> by Phil Harris and my nurse, or his orchestra. <laughs> and uh, incidentally, Phil, I listened to you last Sunday when I was home, you know, and your specialty was very good. I didn't know it was in you. Thanks, my little buckaroo. <laughs> well. <laughs> did you hear me too, Jack? Of course I did, Kenny. I thought you did a swell job. Believe me, I was all in. I had to sing three songs. Oh, what a strain. Three songs in one week. I don't see how you did it. <laughs> I bet it'll tell on me when I get older. <laughs> Oh, no doubt. no doubt. Say, Mary, that reminds me. Why didn't you work last Sunday? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't feeling so good. I had fever and chills and pains and a headache. Oh. So we all went to the Trocadero. It's <laughs> been quite a party, huh? Yeah, with some stuff. Yeah. Say, Jack, tell us the truth. Did you get a kick sitting home listening to your own show? Yes, I did, Don. And I'm going to tell you something, but don't let it go to your head. Mm -hmm. uh, when you read the commercial and told everybody how to make jello. Well, it just did something to me. <laughs> I tell you, Don, I was electrified. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. And Don, listen, Don, when you said, look for the big red letters on the box, as sick as I was, I jumped right out of bed and looked for them. 
You did? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, Jack, didn't you love the way I said, there is only one Jell-O, and the trademark is your guarantee? John, when I heard that, well, there was a lump on my throat. Don't you mean a lump in your throat? No, this was an ice bag. <laughs> But, Don, the biggest thrill I got all evening was when you mentioned the different flavors. Really, Jack? Absolutely. Of course, when you started out with strawberry, raspberry, and cherry, that didn't affect me so much. But when you got to orange, I felt myself slipping. And by the time you reached lime... What happened? I was in another world. <laughs> you were? And snoring twice as loud as ever before. I was not. Benny, it's time for another pill. Oh, yes, doctor, yes. Here you are, a pretty blue one. Hey, wait a minute, this is a button. Oh, goody, I've been looking for that all week. <laughs> oh, answer the phone, Mary. If that's my father, tell him it's in the mail. <laughs> okay. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, Mama. No, oh, it's her again. Yes? Yes, Mama, yours is in the mail, too. Uh, what? Oh, Jack is feeling much better. No, Mama, I won't get too close to him. You think I had measles or something? Yes, Mama, Jack's going to take a vacation in a few weeks. We all are. What? No. No. No, Mama, you can't. That's impossible. What does she want, Mary? Mama wants to take over the summer show. <laughs> Tell her no, I'll never be able to follow her. Uh, oh, Mama, he says he'll never be able to follow you. What? <laughs> what are you laughing at? She says you won't even be able to follow this phone call. <laughs> oh, matching wits, huh? Well, goodbye, Mama. Thanks for calling. I'll write you a letter tomorrow. What? Oh, that's too bad. Well, goodbye. Isn't that awful, Jack? I won't be able to write letters home anymore. Why not? Papa's raising pigeons in the mailbox. <laughs> well, send her my dove, or my love. <laughs> and now, uh, ooh, and now, folks, that very... <laughs> about the worst gag I've ever pulled, I think. And now, folks, that Mary's mother has had her little fling, Kenny Baker will sing... Uh, what are you going to sing, Kenny? Oh, I'll think of something. Well, think, Kenny. Playboys.
Baker singing Was It Rain from the hit parade. And Kenny, I must tell you, last Sunday I heard you sing that number you wrote. Uh, what's the name of it again? You Are My Love. That's it. It was beautiful. I'll, I'll have to play it on my violin sometime. <laughs> oh, Jack, it's my first song. <laughs> Well... Let it grow up before you kill it. Mm. You two have a lot of respect for an invalid. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our, uh, for our feature attraction this evening, for our dramatic socko, we are going to present an original mystery melodrama, a thrilling and blood-curdling adventure entitled Death at Midnight, or the... <laughs> murder Case. <laughs> Now, I will play the part of Detective O'Benny, who always gets his man. Phil Harris will be my assistant. Who always gets your girl. Quiet. <laughs> now, as this is a murder mystery, Mary Livingston will be the wife of the murderee. <laughs> and Kenny Baker will be the victim. Oh, gee, there's no future in that. <laughs> I'm going to be your wife. What have I got? Please. And last but not thinnest is Don Wilson, who will be the butler. However, before presenting our mystery folks, let me give you a brief synopsis of what has happened up to now. On the night of May 3rd, A.D., after dinner, <laughs> Mr. J. Wellington Crotsmeyer. Wellington, yes. A social line was found murdered in his den. At the time of the murder, his wife was in the room reading a copy of Live Alone and Like It, which may have thrown her a thought. The victim was playing solitaire when suddenly he was interrupted by a lead kibitzer. <laughs> now, who committed this crime? Was it the butler? I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. Was it the French maid? Ooh la la, viva la corpse. <laughs> was it Bing Crosby? No, but he mentioned my name last week. <laughs> and now the wife, Mrs. Crossmere. Did you kill your husband? I hated him. I loathed him. I despised him. So that night I... Stop! We can't give it away now, folks. But this mystery will go on immediately after the next number. Play, Phil, and make it snappy. Our listeners must be on the edge of their seats. Don't fall off, folks. <laughs> Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our mystery play, Murder at Midnight, or When My Dream Boat Comes Home. <laughs> the opening scene is the office of Detective O'Benny at police headquarters. Curtains. Phone call. I mean music. <laughs> Headquarters. Let me talk to Detective O'Benny. That's me. What is it? My name is J. Wellington Crutzmere. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> What's on your mind? I got a hunch I'm going to be murdered. 
What makes you think so? My wife is always pointing a gun at me. Yeah. <laughs> when she pulls the trigger, let me know. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Anything wrong, Cap? No, oh, some fella thinks he's going to be murdered. Is he? I hope not. The boys are delivering beer in the patrol wagon. <laughs> Hello? Detective O'Benny speaking. Uh, this is Mrs. Crossmere. Were you just talking to my husband? Yes, nice chap. He sure was. <laughs> now, what do you mean? Come over at once. I think he's been shot. Your husband shot? What makes you think so? He's laying on the floor, and there's an extra buttonhole in his shirt. <laughs> there is, eh? Well, I'll be right over. And don't make any more buttonholes till I get there. Okay, Cap, bring some white rock. Right. <laughs> Goodbye. What happened, Cap? Crotchmere was right. So was Barnum. Yes, and they're both dead. Well, we got to do something about that. You take Barnum and I'll take Crotchmere. No, you take Barnum and I'll take Crotchmere. Barnum, Barnum Crotchmere, Crotchmere, Barnum. Barnum. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> no, we can't do that. We got to get over there at once and investigate. Follow me, Harris. Right, oh, Cap. Take care of the office, Lieutenant. Okay. Come on, Sarge. Let's go. Better take your pill first, Mr. Benny. Oh, all right, Doc. Come on, Sarge, we're off. Cap O' Benny rides again. <laughs> well, here we are, Sarge. This is the place, all right. Open up in the name of the law. This is police headquarters. Doggone it, I forgot to release the brake. <laughs> again. This must be the place, Sarge. It better be. We're out of gas. Open up. Come on, open the door. I'll break it down. <laughs> well, good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> good evening, eh? Make a note of that, Sarge. Okay, Cap. <laughs> You're the butler, aren't you? How do you know? Your uniform is a dead giveaway. Now, come on, you. Where's the body? You mean Mr. Crotsmers? Yes. Well, he's right there on the floor. <laughs> Thanks. Follow me, Sarge. Yeah, man. Hmm. Musicians are all alike. <laughs> Who's this? Wait a minute, are you Mrs. Crotsmer? No, I am the maid. Yeah, what's your name? Fee Fee. Your last name? Poo Poo. Fee Fee Poo Poo. Wee Wee. Wee Wee. <laughs> Make a note of that, Sarge. Woo -woo. <laughs> Sergeant. Uh-uh. <laughs> now, Fifi, bring Mrs. Crotchmere in here. Here I am, Cap, fit as a fiddle and ready for a new husband. Oh, yeah? I want to talk to you, madam. Go ahead, blue coat. Take a load off your feet and sit down. Thanks. Ouch! What's the matter, Cap? I've been looking for that badge all day. Oh. <laughs> now, Mrs. Crotsmere, where were you at the time of the murder? In back of the gun, minding my own business. So you did have a gun, eh? Yes. Where'd you buy the bullets? At Bullets Wilshire. <laughs> That's a local gag, folks, but it fits. <laughs> now, listen, Mrs. Crotsmere. I want the whole story for you right from the start, and I want the truth. Get it the truth! Okay, bloodhound. <laughs> My husband and I were sitting in the den. He was behind his desk cleaning his pipe. Yes, yes, go on. When suddenly a shot rang out. I looked toward the window, and there I saw... Beg pardon, madam. Are we having jello for dinner? <laughs> yes, Jenkins. Any particular flavor? A little of each, and be sure that it's genuine jello with the big red letters on the box. Make it out of that, Sarge. Gotcha, pal. <laughs> Now, go ahead, Mrs. Crutchmere. What did you see? Well, I looked out of the window, and there in the moonlight, I saw shadows running across the lawn. Oh, moonlight and shadows, eh? <laughs> Must have been making a dash for the hit parade. Make a note of that, Sarge. Ain't worth it. <laughs> and then what happened, Mrs. Crutchmere? I screamed to fire two shots. <laughs> two shots, eh? I thought you were lying. Now, listen, gal, you're coming with me. And what's more, you're coming without a struggle. I never struggled yet, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
then slap the bracelets on her, Sarge. <laughs> now, let's go. Now, wait a minute. Hold everything. No one move. Come in. It's time for another pill, Mr. Benny. <laughs> I haven't got time for that, Doc. Now, get out of here. Come on, Sarge, and take Mrs. Crotsmere with you. What was that? Look, Sarge. Someone threw a stone through the window. Yes, Captain, there's a note tied around it. A note, eh? What does it say? Hillside 5027. <laughs> that nurse again. She sure gets around. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, Sarge. Wait a minute, there's the phone. Maybe it's a clue. I'll take it. Hello? Yes? Yes? What? Who? Cactus face? Cactus face? <laughs> Doggone it, we got the wrong last page. <laughs> What'll I do now? <laughs> <laughs> this will be concluded next Sunday night. Will the murder be solved? Will they find the right page? Will Jack's doctor run out of pills? Listen in next Sunday night and find out. Play pill. Dessert is a great favorite with everybody, and here's a dessert that's everybody's favorite. Ice cream made with Jell-O ice cream powder. The new way to have rich, mellow ice cream more quickly, more easily, more economically. For Jell-O ice cream powder makes delicious, creamy ice cream, the kind with the real old-fashioned homemade flavor. Yet you actually use less cream and get more ice cream. And you make it right in the freezing trays of your refrigerator. Or, if you prefer, you'll get the same wonderful results with an ordinary hand freezer. All you do is combine Jell-O ice cream powder with milk, some cream and sugar, and you'll soon have a quart and a half of smooth, mellow ice cream. An economical, <laughs> I'll say it is, why one package of Jell-O ice cream powder makes uh, one and a half quarts of ice cream twice as much as most other such products on the market. So serve ice cream made with Jell-O ice cream powder soon. There are five rich, delicious flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, lemon, and maple, and there is unflavored, too, so that you can make any flavored ice cream you want. Ask your grocer tomorrow for several packages of Jell-O ice cream powder. number of the 35th program in the new Jell-O series. We're with you again next Sunday night when we will finish our thrilling mystery. So be sure and listen in. Come on, Mary, you going home? Take my handcuffs off first. Oh, yes, that's right. Good night, folks. <laughs> Run Away From Love is from The Singing Marine. The Jell-O program comes to you from Hollywood over the red network of the National Broadcasting Company.